Good morning. So, is a calorie a calorie? That came from a discussion I had yesterday with someone who was talking about how they've been on really, really low calorie diets before and not lost weight. Now, put simply, a calorie is a calorie. It's a unit of measure. So, it's a bit like saying it's gravity, gravity. A calorie is a calorie. Now, what happens inside the body is calories in, calories out will prevail. However, there is an asterisk on that to an extent. We, like, you can, you, if you eat 400 calories of, you know, biscuits, chocolate, you'll probably lose weight. But you'll be hungry, you'll be tired, you'll be nutrient deficient in lots of minerals and nutrients. You'll probably not sleep very well. You probably won't want to work out. You'll be starving you'll probably end up binging. And I want to touch on is a calorie is a calorie because what happens in digestion and absorption is we actually burn calories digesting and absorbing the foods as well. So foods have thermic effect. So let's take protein. I know I talk about protein a lot, but in terms of today's world, we talk about keeping our independence for as long as possible. You know, people often say, you know, I'm expecting grandchildren. I feel my joints getting a bit more achy than normal. I want to make sure that I'm still around for longer. I want to keep my independence. I've seen others deteriorate over the years and I don't want that to be myself. And protein plays a key role in this in terms of not just independence, but disease prevention, recovery from potential diseases. You know, it's often our bed rest, which is kind of the issue sometimes in recovery from an illness. And illnesses are probably inevitable. You know, at some point, we're going to probably encounter something. So we, it's almost like thinking about prehab and having as much muscle as possible is key and protein is linked to this. But let's, let's take protein. Like digesting and absorbing protein burns about 20 to 30% of the calories. Like just digesting and absorbing, it's very inefficient. And although this is a minor thing, it's not, it's not huge. This is something that counts towards the whole equation here, not to mention that protein impacts our hunger hormones quicker than say anything else. So it has a satiating effect. Now that's not to say others don't, like carbohydrates do have a satiating effect as well. Like say potatoes in the satiety index, it's actually one of the most satiating foods, like filling foods is a potato. And before you say, oh, I can just eat loads of chips, that's smothered in fat, right? So we've got to look at that's carbs and fats together. So now we start to think about it. Let's use the satiety index and the thermic effect of food together. So when we look at, say, why the satiety index, which is a list of foods. So researchers, they look at foods. How full do people feel, essentially, after eating these foods? Remember, this is a potato, plain, plain potato. Not anyone does that, but it might do. But, you know, take boiled potatoes. They found that people were satiated, quite satisfied. And it wasn't a very Moorish food. And it was quick to fill people up. And if you think about it, it's, it's kind of true, right? There's only simply boiled eggs, uh, boiled eggs, boiled potatoes, plain, like chicken you can eat. And it's when we sometimes we mix that, the foods together to make them delicious. And I'm saying don't do this. But it's being aware of how this impacts our taste fatigue, our satiety, our hunger, and all of these things with it as well. So if we go back to that, let's take protein, 20 to 30% calories burned through digestion and absorption. So a higher protein diet, you're already going to burn a few more calories of that. And if you throw on top of that, take carbohydrates, about 3% of the calories um, are going to be burned through digestion and absorption, which is, which is again, just minimal, but it's, it's good to be aware of this stuff, you know, like, no one really talks about that. Morning. Yeah. And then if we take the fat side of things, about 3% is going to be burned off through digestion and absorption. And again, it's a minimal thing. But as you can see, eating a higher protein diet already is almost like giving you good interest rates on that, if you like. And I don't want to overplay this. Like, oh, I can eat more because I'm eating more protein here. But my point in this is, is a calorie is a calorie. But there are other things that come into this, like satiety, like how hungry you are, 
Now, obviously, you can override them. We can override our hunger hormones with our habits. You know, if we, if we didn't have access to food when we were hungry, we would just not eat. So we, we can do it. But obviously, we want this to be as pleasant as possible. And that's where protein comes in, in terms of satisfying our hunger hormones need, not to mention the recovery, the muscle, the bone density, the independence as we age as well. So if you consider those three things in that the difference between digestion and absorption, it does play a bit of a role in terms of, I guess, the, the thermogenic effect of how many calories you're burning and storing, etc. But then if we go into carbohydrates now, they're our preferred source of energy. We tend to perform better in exercise when we've had carbohydrates, which may mean that perhaps you burn more calories because you perform better. Now, the problem is sometimes is when we think of carbohydrates, we think of like cakes, biscuits, ice creams, and they get put in this bad place. Now, these are more processed foods, really, when you think about it, which are high in sugar and fat, right? So they're high in sugar and fat, not just carbohydrates. So when we look at carbohydrates, like I mentioned, that's why I brought up the satiety index. If you take like boiled potatoes, it's quite hard to overeat boiled potato. I'm not saying eat boring foods, but it's just a reminder that Actually, perhaps hunger and perhaps perhaps carbohydrates get a bad name more so because they're easy to overeat when they're combined with fat in a processed way. Because actually a lot of these foods, like cakes, biscuits, processed foods, are high in fat and carbohydrate, not just carbohydrate. So when we look at that in terms of a bland food, carbohydrates actually can have quite a satiating effect because, well, one, insulin which is a storage hormone, which you, know, you might have heard a lot of negative things about, and you know, it can be negative. It's chronically high, and you're always eating carbohydrates all the time, overeating carbohydrates all the time, I should say, and that means you're overeating calories. This can result in you know, excess body fat, which can lead to insulin resistance, which can lead to potential diabetes, blood sugar level control. But at the same time, extreme low carb diets could then lead to um, impacting our thyroid output as well so but obviously that's that's very that's being very strict with it and for me like i like to go lower carb and then i'll allow the carbohydrates just to come in my day-to-day -day life like that just happen when i'm eating with kids when eating out etc that's just how i work better I concentrate better digest better you know ibs things like that um, lowering your fermentable carbohydrates is, is going to be a good thing for that. Really doesn't go off on the tangent here. But just to go, go over, that ultimately when it comes to weight loss, a calorie is a calorie. But when it comes to your health, well-being and long-term weight loss maintenance, we have to look at this a little bit differently. I could lose weight eating four digestive biscuits, you know, 400 calories, 500 calories of digestive biscuits, but I'm going to be absolutely starving. I'm probably going to lose a bit more muscle than I want to. And I need to be wary that, you know, <laughs> when I go back to eating normally, I need to make sure I'm, I'm doing this properly, not just going, oh my God, this, the diet's now over. I'm just going to binge eat here. So if you are struggling to lose weight and you're eating a calorie, but you're not getting sufficient protein in, I would say, being the key one, I would look to increase that first, even if you're trying low calorie, because it might help you actually stick to it for longer. Because this is another thing here in that sometimes we go so low, we just don't actually stick to it for long enough to see the results because we've always got a social event. We're always skipping it. And actually, sometimes it's about maybe I should go higher, but actually do it. And then at least I've got some data. I've got some data on what's working, what's not working. I've got some data when I stick to this, what happens? So I hope that helps and, and it's, it's why sometimes I recommend if you're going into this and you've, you've tried trying everything and nothing's changing is actually using a weekly budget of calories. So, you know, instead of say 1300 calories a day, 1300 over seven days is actually 9,100. So where you've now got 9,100, you can spend them how you want over the week. And then we call this the 80, 20 rule um, in our kickstart program in terms of can I get 80% from whole nutritious foods and then allow myself 20% from you know anything I want. So I've got permission to have what I want and not feel guilty because it's part of the plan rather than off the plan. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you 
bit of a few things to think about today. Have an awesome day and uh, I'm about to step up my walk into some sprints. So I will see you later. If you want more information about our Kickstart programme, brand new studio opening in Chippenham this week coming. And also Marlborough Devices, comment below with Kickstart and I'll get you the details. Have an awesome day and I'll see you later.